Hi everyone, how are you doing? I hope you had a good reading month. Uh, let me know what you read over the course of May in the, the comments below. We can have a, a chat about it. Um, I read quite a few things, um, a mixture of some really long novels and uh, some really short books. Um, so I'll be talking about all of those. Uh, but uh, first, to just to note, uh, yes, I have had my first at-home haircut. Um, over the weekend, my partner and I cut each other's hair. Uh, I, he did a really good job. Um, I think it looks quite good overall. Um, I, I'm not sure I did such a good job on, on his hair. It doesn't look terrible, but um, but yeah, I, I'm slightly... I don't think I'm going to become a hairdresser, basically. Um, but that's never going to happen. Um, yeah, we did watch like a few different tutorial videos about how to cut hair, but I did have a moment of panic, like right in the middle of cutting his hair. I suddenly thought like, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. And I got really scared. Um, but I pushed through. Um, I think it looks okay. But anyway, yeah, so I got through that hurdle of uh, this, you know, period at home, this very weird period at home. So, uh, so yeah, um, I have lots of books to talk about, um, which I'm really eager because um, there's lots of things to say about them. Also, I have some incredibly exciting news, which I'll... I'll talk about over the course of discussing these books, um, but it's incredibly exciting news. I'm, I'm so, oh, it's upcoming thing. That's going to be so, so, so great. So uh, first off, there is Joyce Carol Oates' new, big new novel, Night, Sleep, Death, the Stars. This is about 800 pages long. Um, I, I've discussed this a bit recently um, in uh, in a video I made talking about lawn books, and uh, and a few people said that they want to know, you know, my final thoughts about this. So I did finally finish this over over the weekend, and uh, it's incredible. I I love this reading experience. I'm always a big Joyce Carol Oates fan, but what she does in this novel um, is so powerful and moving, and um, and it's uh, part of it is working with. With, um, themes that are slightly familiar to her earlier work, but then also I think it pushes beyond to a whole new level of uh, understanding and insight that I haven't come across before um, in in the way she's she's written. So I um, so to to start off, I have to say as well that at the center of this novel, um, it's it's. She, she wrote this novel a couple of years ago, but at the center of the book, the, the main story and thrust of the, the narrative is about a um, attack um, using excessive violence on the part of police against an um, innocent man and um, actually against two innocent men. Um, because in this isn't a spoiler because this happens in the first six pages of the book in the prologue it explains this um, this horrible attack where uh, basically a, a, a man who um, is pulled over to the side of the road, the policemen believe he's black, but then, you know, when um, they, they actually confront him, they find out he's an Indian man. And, uh, and they're um, using excessive violence against him. And, uh, and so the, um, the protagonists of the, the, um, the, the family um, that's at the center of this novel, the father of that family. Um, he's driving along by himself. Um, he's a man in his 60s. He's white. He's um, upper class. He's a former mayor of the, the town. And he, um, he notices that the excessive violence is being used by police officers. So he pulls over to the side of the road and he um, gets out and he questions them. And the police officers attack um, him as well and um, they brutally beat both men and taser them and uh, and so the the novel follows basically the fallout of this this incident and um, and yeah looking at the reverberations of this violence now it's even though Joyce Carol Oates wrote this two years ago um, it's incredibly timely this is just being published in the next week and uh, and obviously there's been lots of news about the um brutal beating and um subsequent death of george floyd and all of the the the, the protests um that have risen up as a result of this racial attack on the part of the police of um of a white police officer using excessive violence against a, a black man and um and that that video is so excruciating to to watch and um and it's it's not surprising that there's been such an outcry and a um uprising and protest um especially because you know we've seen so many of these um these these videos and um over over the past many years actually you know in american history and 
this is something that recurs again and again. And of course, there are you know untold amounts of accounts like this that weren't ever recorded, that didn't have someone there um, who happened to be recording this to be able to testify and witness to the rest of the world what is happening. And you know, you think about how many incidents must occur like this on all different levels of um, from you know that sometimes do result in death, sometimes just result in um, the. In, in the battery and the humiliation of individuals. And yeah, and so it's, um, yeah, this is very timely subject matter. And it's really interesting the way that Oates examines this um, throughout the, the course of the novel of, of the, the fallout of an incident like this. And, uh, and so it's, I mean, it's really centered around um, this family life, this, the McLarens of the, the father um, of the family and how, they're, you know, they're a white upper middle class family and it follows their different lives. And um, there are five different children in this family um, who are all very different from each other and have different, they're um, obviously the, the, um, the McLaren couple, they're in their 60s and the five children, they're adults. And, um, and so it, um, yeah, it follows all their different reactions and um, how especially the three eldest children in the family have their own prejudices and um, from their, you know, growing up in this very privileged position and how she sort of untangles those, uh, that privileged position that they each um, inhabit and how these prejudices that they have um, against uh, people who are lower class, um, people who are immigrants, people who um, are non-white, uh, how she untangles all those prejudices to show that really at the root of those prejudices is fear and anger um, uh, that come from different sources and which are just expressed in, in these um, directed at, at people who they see as others. And uh, yeah, the, the way she untangles that and examines that um, over many pages um, is really powerful, really impactful. And uh, so I, I think it's um, yeah, just amazing how relevant and timely this, this novel feels. Um, but also it's the way she looks at um, the dynamic of family, you know, apart from these political issues uh, and larger social issues, um, the way she looks at families, the dynamic of families, the way families work, the way we certain family members become categorized in a certain mold of, of this is how we think of these people and and how family members will relate to them in a certain way and they sort of get stuck um relating to them in a in a in a certain way which um diminishes their the multifaceted aspects of their personalities um i think anyone who's you know, in, in a member of a family knows how we get sort of stuck with a certain almost like label on us, like where this is who we are. And but obviously, as we grow, we change over the years. Um, we different parts of our personality come out. And it's almost like because we're known from our family from our birth um, that we become locked in this, you know, certain image and how our family members relate to us that um yeah it takes it's difficult to break out of that and so it's interesting how she traces the path of family members trying to break out of that and how that often occurs when there's a big cataclysmic event in the family like the the brutal beating of the father of this family and what happens afterwards and the um the the real grief and struggle of the family to dealing with that afterwards um at the loss of this very strong, um, charismatic, patriarchal leader of the family. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I think it's incredibly relatable on, on that way, you know, apart from the larger concerns of, of the novel. Um, it's a very human story um, about personal change and um, growth and the way we relate to our family members in different ways. Over, over time and over the years and um, yeah, how there can be these squabbles between family and long-standing um, grievances that family members might hold towards each other and how 
um, yeah, the, the process of trying to overcome that or not, um, you know, some of the family members are able to work past that. Some of them aren't able to. Um, it's, um, it's so powerful how she, how she shows that. There's, there's so much more in this novel, too, that I could talk about, but I've already been going on about it for quite a while. So, um, yeah, uh, I'll, um, I'm, I'm going to write a full review of it, and I'll put a link to that down below once um, I, I finally... Um, put that on my blog and stuff so um, so you can read more about it if you want to but yeah I, I love this novel um, and would obviously highly highly recommend it now also I'm going to announce that uh, I'm uh, I've I've set up an interview with Joyce Carol Oates to talk about this novel as well as her larger career and which is so incredibly exciting you can see i'm like bursting with excitement and nerves because obviously um everyone who um has watched my videos before knows what reverence i have for joyce carol Oates and her work that uh that yet yeah, to be interviewing her is such a dream come true and this isn't something i've been commissioned to do or paid to do i just uh because i've been acquaintances with um joyce over the years i uh and i've seen that she's done a number of zoom interviews now i thought like, why not just reach out to her? And so I wrote her a message asking her if she would be into interested in being interviewed by me and, and uh, she responded saying, yes, of course. So um, so obviously I can't make any promises, you know, it, this might fall apart, it might, you know, things happen that it might not actually happen, but um, but it should do. And, uh, and so that'll be coming very soon and I'm incredibly excited about it. I. Uh, yeah, can't wait to discuss this novel with her and discuss her, her work with her. Obviously, I have so many questions. Um, if you have a burning question you want to, um, that you want me to ask her, um, put that in the comments below. And, uh, and hopefully I'll have time to, to ask her, but obviously I'll have a zillion questions myself because there's so much I want to talk to her about. So I'm going to have to try to restrain myself, limit myself. Uh, to, to, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm so excited about this. It's, it's, um, it's incredible. Um, I think that, to have the chance to talk to her um yeah i'm stumbling over my words already hopefully i'll keep my cool and <laughs> um when when talking to her so uh so that's the first um novel that i just well i that i finished reading very recently um but then another huge novel i finished at the beginning of the month um which i already talked about in my april wrap-up and i feel like i've talked about this novel quite a lot already so i'll i'll talk about the Eighth Life in um, sort of the last few hundred pages of it, but without any spoilers. I'm not going to give any spoilers for anyone who hasn't read it, uh, but um, but just because um, I was reading this mostly over the course of, uh, what was that, April? Yeah, but then finished it, finished the last few hundred pages at the beginning of this month. So um, obviously this is a multi-generational family story as, I, as I've talked about before. And it's interesting how you get to the end of the novel, you see um, the later parts of the life of some of the main characters in the story, um, but also you get really to the heart of um, what's framing this whole novel is the, the narrator is trying to relate her family this this family story to a niece of hers and um it's only in the later parts of the book that you see how um where the narrator comes into the story when she's born into the family um and also when the niece is born into the family and that whole relationship and dynamic and uh, and that's so movingly done um i i was sort of uh, i was almost caught off guard by how much I related to this personally um, because it is a relationship between a aunt and her niece and I'm an uncle, I have two nephews and th looking at that relationship and that bond between them um, which is very distant, they, um, I mean, the, the, the niece grew up in um, back in Georgia and the, um, the aunt she's been living in mainland Europe for most of her adult life and um, and so they they haven't really known each other basically at all since the niece was very young and um, but then the niece sort of latches on to the aunt as someone that she wants to have a connection with um, but does so in a, in a way where she she runs away from home and she um, she contacts the aunt and um, even though that they're mostly unknown to each other and so um, but 
acts in the way as sort of a petulant teenager, um, is, is very bottled up, doesn't really say what she really wants. Um, and this, the aunt finds this initially very frustrating. And I found it so moving, that, that dynamic, because only when the aunt um, secretly looks at the diaries of her niece does she understand the real emotional drive behind why she ran away, why she's seeking out her aunt. And, uh, and I think that's something yeah, that I've found difficult as an adult to kind of navigate of um, how younger people um, find it really difficult to express themselves, you know, their emotional needs and want you. It's almost more like guesswork. And, uh, and, you know, and I've certainly found that in my relationship with my nephews that I, I'll, you know, try to reach out to them, want to have contact with them even though you know they live on a different continent that i do they live back in america and uh, and um and not always getting all that much back from them and um so you know finding it hard to want to continue that conversation but realizing and i can remember this from my own teenage years of not being able to express myself in certain ways uh that uh, that yeah um that really there is that desire to have a relationship but you know it's just um, younger people aren't able to express that as well. So I found that really moving how she portrays this in this novel. So yeah, I, I found the um, I found it very poignant towards the end. But uh, but then also obviously the 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 way the story wraps up as a whole, and um, you you see the later generations of this story, and also the larger political meaning of of what is going to be George's future. Um, she she catalogs the many different changes in the country through the Russian Revolution, through the um, the Soviet rule in the country, and um, mm -hmm. and the many different reactions and um, experiences of the family through that time, and um, and really the you know the future is you know unwritten of what's going to come next in the country, and and um, and it ends on a surprisingly hopeful note um, about that. So. Uh, yeah, so it's it's really fascinating. Um, I would say too, the main criticism I've seen about this this novel is that towards the end, some of the the characters seem to blend together and aren't as differentiated um, as much as as maybe um, they they could be. Um, uh, and I did sort of find that with the characters of Mika and Miro, um, I felt like even though they um, were different generations, they their characters sort of blended together to me. I didn't see too many distinctions between them. And also people have made the criticism that the um, there's not too many positive representations of male characters in this novel, that a lot of the the, the men, the male characters, um, act in a really horrible way. Um, but I would, I would, um, I, I, I sort of, I see how people make those criticisms, but I, I don't entirely agree with them because I think other than those two characters I cited, I think all the other characters are quite um, distinct from each other and are fully rounded um, in a really interesting way. Uh, and also that there are several more minor male characters. I mean, the, the primary 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 characters in this novel are mostly female, um, though there are some very prominent male characters as well. But um, but yeah, some of the more periphery male characters are quite a positive, interesting um, representation of, of, of different um, yeah, men. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, so I, I don't entirely agree with those criticisms. Um, but, uh, but yeah, basically, overall, the, the novel worked incredibly well for me. I thought it was so powerful, really wonderful reading experience. And obviously I interviewed the author and the translators recently and uh, and have would have so much more to ask them, even though I talked to them for an hour. Um, there, there was so much more to say about this book because it's an incredible, immersive experience. Um, and, you know, with both of these long novels, as I've been talking about recently with, with longer novels, did find myself just completely engrossed and swallowed by the stories of them, these, these epic stories that they tell, um, which is kind of a relief, you know, during this time, I, I've just found it a great relief to be able to, um, you know, not necessarily escape from the real world, but, uh, but you know, engage with it in a different way, I, I would say. Um, it's, it's not so much escapism, but engaging with the world in a, in a really different way. So, so those are the longer novels I wrote. I read. Uh, then, then there are um, several other shorter books um, and one medium-sized book. Um, so, Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendez um, is is a book around is it three four three hundred and fifty pages or so. Um, and this is uh, I I love this novel. Um, it's such an incredible 
uh, reading experience, what he what he does in this really caught me off guard the way he, he wrote it and styled it because as I've spoken about before with this novel, it's about the, the legacy of the Windrush generation of people um, who moved from the Caribbean in um, after World War II to Britain um, because uh, they needed more people in the workforce. And so people from the Caribbean were encouraged to move here. And so it initially follows the, the story of a character named Norman who moves to the UK from the Caribbean with his family. And his, um, so it follows him for about the first 50 or so pages and his experiences moving here in um, the 60s, I think, or is it the 50s, the 50s or 60s? He, he moves here and um, yeah, the real difficulty he encounters um, with racism and, and um, how he's, his skills Basically, he's a he's um, a very good gardener, and um, his skills aren't valued in the way that they should be. Um, he's a horticulturalist, and um, and has an incredible amount of knowledge. But um, but yeah, he um, finds himself doing really grueling manual labor that really yeah isn't utilizing his talents and. That section of the story is so moving and immersive. I was completely with him. Um, it's really beautifully written, and um, and so I was almost initially shocked when the um, the story then moves on to many years later in the early two thousands when a character named Jesse moves from the northern part of England to London, and he's a young black man who is a former Jehovah's Witness. So yeah, that that change is quite abrupt. And I, I, at first, I like I, I want to stay with Norman's story. I felt like I could have read a whole novel about Norman because he's a really interesting character. And, and the way he, he writes about that historical period is really moving and powerful. But then, yeah, when he moves on to Jesse, there's an incredible immediacy to the story. And I was able to relate to it um, much more personally um, as someone who moved to London in the, um, in the year 2000, actually almost exactly in the year that Jesse moves to, to London. And, uh, and, uh, and so a lot of experiences um, of that time and the area he lives in is an area that I lived in as well and so um, yeah I was able to personally relate to it on a number of different levels and also as a gay man moving to the city of London um, obviously not as a black man that's a very different experience um, so I'm not going to claim to you know understand that experience but as a gay man I can really relate to that um, experiences of um, coming to the city and finding this you know, explosion of um, basically sexual opportunity that I didn't have growing up in somewhere that was much more rural. Um, you know, there just wasn't as many gay people around. And um, yeah, so to read about Jesse's experiences on that level, the way he describes his evolving sexuality, his sexual experiences, his um, this sort of explosive joy and freedom he has having all these sexual experiences, I really related to, I thought was um, so powerfully written about. I don't think since reading Garth Greenwell have I read, you know, a examination of the way sexuality works and the way our bodies and sex, yeah, the whole psychology of that and um, he describes it so beautifully. Um, yeah, so I, I thought that was incredibly powerful. But yeah, also just these individual experiences, which, you know, were not my own, of where he becomes a, a rent boy and the whole complicated aspects of, of that, of, um, of selling himself, selling his body for money. And uh, yeah, and the, the different levels of that. And I thought it, it was so interesting how he, um, and really effective, how he draws the... Jesse is a very strong-willed individual and character, um, but also he has a lot of vulnerability. And um, yeah, just the way he creates that fully rounded character is is really incredible, I think. And really, um, this is a debut novel, and to, to write about that in that, that way. Um, um, obviously, as the, the author has talked about in interviews, this was inspired by autograph biographical experiences. Um, so, but, um, but I think it's really rare for an author to... Um, I think he gets beyond, he, he, um, he's able to write about him in a way that shows the greater complexities, though it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a memoir. It feels, it feels like um, it is a fully rounded character and an artistic work in that way. You know, he, he does something beyond the, he's able to write about a very personal experience, but to um, write in a way that 
you know, the, you can see the greater consequences of this, the greater meaning of this, the greater way that this, um, this works in society, you know, which I think makes it a really tremendous work of art. It's why it's, you know, a great work of literary fiction, um, rather than just being a memoir. So, uh, so yeah, there's, um, yeah, this incredible novel, I'd highly recommend the, the way he follows his journey in that way is so interesting and moving, going backwards and forwards in time, the way he relates this to earlier generations, eventually, it does sort of, um, it, it seems like they're quite distinct at first, but then it sort of comes back around and ties together at the end in a really interesting way. So um, yeah, um, incredible debut novel, highly recommend. Then um, to move on to this um, much shorter novel called Minor Detail by Adania Shibley. And uh, this is an incredibly powerful short novella too, um, which, uh, yeah, talking about the I was been talking about um, short books recently and um, how yeah the special challenges that authors find to be able to write so effectively in such a short amount of time and I think this author does this so well. Um, it it um so it follows uh, the incident in 1948 where a uh, a Palestinian woman is raped and murdered by Israeli soldiers in the desert during um, the, the war of 1948. But she looks at that from a really interesting perspective. Like I thought it would be a really grueling, like realistic portrayal of that. And it is written in a very realistic way. But um, but from it looking at it from the perspective of a Israeli commander who's part of this um this troop of soldiers um, that are patrolling the desert and so effective and moving how she writes about this like the um the actual violence isn't portrayed um so uh but you you almost see it more in a periphery way it's like you're very aware it's happening on the side and that almost makes it even more effective and more heartbreaking and uh so um, yeah, I thought that was incredibly effective how she writes that. But then um, the second part of the novel moves on to a woman, a Palestinian woman who was born exactly 25 years after, after the death of this woman and follows her. She um, sees a note about this, um, this incident over the, during the course of her work and how she follows that, um, that story and she uh, she uh, so she embarks on this journey to discover more about what happened to this woman um, traveling into very hostile territory and um, and putting herself at at risk and um, and it's so beautiful the um, parallels between these two different stories um, she'll there'll be certain images of um, things that the women see um, there are certain sounds and smells um, which recur over the two sections of of the the book which link these two stories together which is so moving and, and effective and and almost sort of blends the the stories together and these women's experiences but at the same time making them very distinct and and um, so shows this struggle in a very dynamic way over a period of years and um, yeah it's just so artful how this the, how this this novel is written I highly recommend this this novel as well um i know if i'm like, sounding like um as usual i'm sounding like i have effusive praise for for all of these books but really um i think they're they're incredible books um some of these later books i have more mixed feelings about so don't worry i'm um yeah gonna <laughs> go into that as well that i could go on about it a lot more but um but yeah again i'll, I'll link to my full review below if you want to know more of my my thoughts about that this um, as, as I always do. Um, then I read the novel Pew by Catherine Lacey, which is a relatively short novel. It's only about 200 pages long. And, um, and as I talked about in the book also, the, the premise of this novel is about a, um, a, a um, individual named, uh, well, an anonymous individual arrives at a town and um, falls asleep on the pew of a church where the, the, um, the members of the town during a church service find this individual sleeping there in the church and put questions to this um this individual but um but the the person doesn't answer back um and uh and i am speaking about them in ambiguous terms because you don't know if this character who they named they named pew um is a man or a woman whether they are black or white or um 
some other ethnic background and uh, and so yeah really and don't know their age they, they could be you know sort of a young adolescent child or they could be a teenager and um, they just don't know so it's about how all the the many different characters of this town deal with that by taking this individual in and um, and yeah trying to understand how to deal with them and um, and uh, and they never get any answers about who they are uh, um, so uh, but it's interesting how the narrative is structured in that you see things from Pew's point of view and you um, you get Pew's thoughts as as they're taken in by this town and but then you see the points of view of of the people of the town through dialogue of what they say to Pew and so you get these long sections of um, basically monologues of of them talking to Pew and Pew not responding um, and in a way which reveals a lot about their their character and um, who their the assumptions that they make and their prejudices uh, as well as hidden parts of their personality which they don't often show to people when they're confronted with this very quiet individual they just start narrating their life to them and um, yeah sort of giving a lot away about them and uh, and uh, and that's really interesting how I I, I wasn't sure at first whether that was going to work that sort of dynamic of this very interior view by Pew and then the um, yeah dialogue of the characters of the town I mean you cannot obviously um, this is quite similar to uh, Rachel Cusk's novel Outline where yeah, you have a central character that you don't know much about uh, but you sort of learn more about them just by the way that other characters relate to them and uh, um, but I would, I would also make parallels with Ali Smith's novel The Accidental and also Elizabeth Strout's novel Anything is Possible um, in the way of looking at a um, t town members um, different town members lives and uh, and yeah it's really interesting how she shows the different dynamics of this town I feel like it's it was slightly stretching sort of believability that um, characters would the characters in this novel would relate so much about their personal lives. I mean, they basically, Pew will just show up at their door sometimes and, and they'll suddenly start going into many details about their past history and life and secrets that they hold and stuff. And, and like, really, would they be that confessional with this complete stranger who doesn't speak back to them? Uh, but overall, I did thought it, think it was really effective how it does that. And um, yeah, and it's sort of looking at this larger dynamic of... of of what is, um, yeah, all the questions this novel raises about why do we make certain assumptions about people? Why do we categorize people in this way? Um, what is the meaning of, of a town? What are the, the bonds we really have to each other? How close are our communities really with each other? How much are they really a community? Or are they a collection of individuals sort of at odds with each other? And also there's a whole sort of uh, creepy edge to this novel where um, it basically takes place over the course of a week and it's building up to a big festival in this town at the end of the week, which has a slightly Wicker Man type feel to it in the, the building up to it in the creepy atmosphere of it. It doesn't turn out to be, I don't want to give any spoilers and not going to say what the festival actually is, but it isn't as, it doesn't work in that sort of horror movie way um, where there's this, or like Midsummer, you know, it doesn't work really in that way. Um, but it does, it adds this air of tension to the narrative, I think, you know, in addition to asking these larger questions which makes it really intriguing and made me want to read on to know what was going to happen in this festival and it is really interesting how it plays out so I, I will say that um, so yeah I thought this was a really interesting novel overall um, I've not read any of Catherine Lacey's fiction before um, but I would be intrigued to read more of it though yeah I've heard some criticisms of her writing in the past so but uh, but yeah I'd be I'd be interested to read more by her um, then I read this novel, A Hundred Million Years and a Day by Jean-Baptiste Andrea. And this is a uh, French writer. Um, this was translated by Sam Taylor, who also translated the um, fiction of Leila Slamini, um, which is one of the reasons I was interested in reading this. Um, and also there was an endorsement by the writer Sarah Taylor, who, uh, who wrote The Shore. Um, I think she's an incredible writer. So yeah, um, because of her endorsement, I was keen to read it. And I thought this was interesting but it didn't entirely work for me it wasn't wholly effective for me um so it follows the story of a paleontologist who um in i think it takes place in the 1950s or somewhere around the mid 20th century basically this paleontologist hears a story about a uh, a dragon 
the the bones and remains of a dragon which are buried in a mountain in the Andes and um, he hears this from a, a girl and it's just sort of a rumor and a story but based on that he thinks that these are the remains of a dinosaur and because the dinos- dinosaur remains haven't been discovered in this region if he discovers them it'll be quite a you know big uh, event to have happen and he'll really make a name for himself in his his field of study so he decides to pursue this and he takes a small team into the Andes at great personal risk and at great personal expenditure basically putting his career on the line to go to this and chase this dream um, which is essentially a rumor so it's a very foolhardy venture but also so, yeah, the expression of a man who is feels like he wants to make a mark in his life and feels like he's been diminished by his very overbearing father. And um, so, yeah, so it follows that that story. It's sort of an adventure story, um, but also, yeah, sort of reflecting on these larger issues of the, the meaning of life and also looking at a sort of large scale individual life in comparison with the grand sweep of time. And uh, and yeah, and it's it was. I found it interesting, but yeah, not wholly engaging or effective. And uh, I just sort of felt that other writers have done this better, like the like Robert McFarlane's writing his Underland, sort of looking at these this sort of layer of history um, as they're making these journeys through this natural environment and looking at these glaciers. And uh, you know, so there's this sort of touchstone to far distant past, and um, and it just wasn't framed as beautifully or as insightfully I felt as Robert McFarlane has done in his writing that he was just sort of stretching for things that didn't quite work and also the other characters in his party I didn't feel like were as fully developed as they should be it is quite a short novel so I felt like if it was a longer novel he would have had more space to develop their characters you get they're sort of quirky and have distinct characteristics to them but it doesn't wasn't wholly um, effective, so yeah, I thought it was. I was thought that was interesting, but just yeah, not a very great novel. So, um, and then I also read this collection called Zebra by uh, Ian Humphreys um, or Zebra, if you want to pronounce it in the American way. And uh, I, um, yeah, this is a poetry collection I've been wanting to get to, and I I thought it was interesting. Again, it's um, it um, it's it's in I think three different parts and the first part is mainly looking at development and I, I, I think sort of early experiences of the author poetry which responds to that and there are some poems I thought were quite effective in in looking at the development of his sexuality and um, his uh, his family relationships um, there's a, a poem called pop which I thought was really powerful uh, but um, but then later poems I felt were a bit too meandering and general in in what they were talking about um i just didn't think they were as effective uh there and there are a couple poems that are set in very specific locations which feels very obviously that the author just um traveled to these locations and and um and uh and then was sort of sitting there and having these profound thoughts um while while sitting there in these locations, which just felt sort of artificial to me, it feels like they're not coming organically. It's it's um it feels too ponderous to me. So um so yeah, it's sort of a mixed collection. Although you know some of the later poems I did think were were quite interesting. Um, but um but yeah, just on the whole, um yeah, it didn't quite work as well, quite quite as well for me. And then finally, um I've been going on a long time. Um but uh but yeah, I read this anthology which I talked about in a um in a, a book called recently um, called Tools for Extinction, which is an anthology that's just come out and was just written very recently, um, which is authors from, um, I think, 18 different authors from around the world, from almost every different continent around the world, except Antarctica, responding to the current pandemic and health crisis. And and um, and so, uh, so you can see all these many different authors. Some of them I've read before, like uh, uh, Joanna Walsh, who's a very interesting um, writer, literary fiction writer, who's, um, who's, uh, whose fiction sort of straddles uh, essay and fiction and memoir and yeah, in a really interesting way. And uh, yeah, she wrote a piece called The Dispossessed, which um, gives a really interesting perspective on, uh, on how lives are captured. You know, there's, um, we, we get these reports on deaths and how that almost seems like in 
it's presented in a way where it's almost an in- inevitability and uh, and so she's sort of examining the the uh, and questioning the uh, the dynamic of that but also how just she personally as a writer like her immediate life hasn't been so affected by this um but how yeah there's obviously larger scale cons- consequences of that and also um i read there's a piece by the norwegian writer john foss which um is really interesting um but um almost doesn't have anything directly to do with the pandemic. And there's a few pieces in this which don't reference the pandemic or current events at all directly, um, but uh, but just more talk about the, the consequences and the fallout and feeling of this. So his piece is um, about this uh, incredible anxieties that this, um, this, this character is having where he wakes up in the middle of the night and journalists are pounding on his windows and and he um yeah he goes on this journey um which turns into this weird sort of spiritual journey and having read his his book the other name uh recently um yeah it's interesting uh the um how there are certain themes he obviously works with which are slightly it's slightly surreal writing but also kind of philosophical in the way he he looks at these these issues and um yeah and there's several writers that i haven't read before and it's really interesting the way they um they're responding to this current crisis and um and also yeah because they're writers from all different parts of the globe it's it's um it's kind of poignant seeing overlaps of certain images like um there are two different pieces of writers in different countries that write about looking out their window and seeing a um an individual who's a neighbor on a balcony by themselves um smoking you know how we have these um there are these things that we notice which we don't didn't necessarily notice so much before um, because they're just sort of a passing part of everyday experience but because we're at home all the time we're looking out the window and noticing these things and um, yeah there are some other um, and the experiences of different experiences of loneliness um, felt around the world and um, yeah so there's there's like a um, a story called Ashen um, which was really interesting in the way that he talks about you know social distancing and enforced um yeah, not being able to have this close proximity to other people and how that enforced distance is a kind of violence um, where we're made to be separated from each other. Yeah, how he writes about that is is quite interesting, although I didn't feel the story was effective as a whole. It felt sort of overly dramatic to me. Um, but um, but yeah, it feels sort of weird critiquing this this work. And it's a whole, it's a mixture of um, some of it is short stories, some of it is is um, essays, some of it is memoir. Um, so yeah, there's a whole, um, some of it is poetry. And um, so, so yeah, it's really interesting, the whole mixture of styles and subjects matter and yeah, different way of looking at the, the pandemic and, and how, um, yeah, how writers are responding to it at the current time. Because, you know, really, I think writers are going to be the great chroniclers of, of this time. And so to see them writing about it, as it's happening, how we're still in the midst of it is really interesting. So, um, so, so, yeah, this is a collection that I, I think is um, was was really interesting to read during during these times. So, those are all the books I read. Um, I've been going on about them a long time, but there's a lot to say about all these books, of course, as always. But um, so, let me know if you've read any of these books too. If you have any thoughts about them, um, let me know your reactions. But yeah, also, like I said, just let me know what what else you've been reading over the course of May and um and 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 your experiences um yeah over over the past month and we can have a chat in the comments below and uh yeah hopefully there'll be an interview coming very soon i'm so excited okay i'll speak to you again soon bye everyone